Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. Two episodes in a weekend, what is this madness? No, I had a little bit more time to put something together this weekend, so I thought I would carry on with what I was doing, and now we are going to be working on our orbital dockyard. So, we are going to be in the vehicle assembly building for the first four or so minutes of this video, where I am going to be scratching my head continuously trying to figure out how I am going to design my dockyard that will be capable of producing interplanetary craft. Yes, this is where we are going to build all of our future interplanetary craft in space. It's going to be very exciting and it is something that I've wanted to do in this series for quite some time. And the great thing about this is that we are going to be building this space station in space as well. The vast majority of the modules that I am going to be putting into this space station will be constructed at our previous space station, the RSSI, which is currently in orbit around Rode. I say most of the modules, there are going to be a few that I am going to have to launch from Rode itself because I cannot produce supplies in the old station and I am going to be launching a nuclear reactor as well because I can't produce enriched uranium from the old space station either. Almost couldn't say that word then. But anyway, what this is going to be is a space station, as I've said, that will be able to produce interplanetary craft. So in order to do that, we are going to have a massive fuel reserve, which is what those white big ball fuel tanks are for. They are going to hold liquid hydrogen because I feel like the vast majority of my interplanetary craft, for at least the time being, are going to be using liquid hydrogen. They're going to be using some nervers, which do run on LH2. We're going to have a huge supply of liquid fuel and oxidizer as well for anything that doesn't require liquid hydrogen. I feel like landers and stuff like that will be using that fuel instead. So we've got those on the side as well. And we've got a living space at the bottom. We've got a recycling unit, all those kind of good stuff in order for our Kerbals to stay on the space station for as long as possible because I don't want to keep coming back to this and having to rotate crew all that much. I will obviously rotate crew, but I, I want to leave it essentially and not have to worry about it too much. So if I can keep them up there for say a year or two at a time, that would be absolutely fabulous. Then what we've got up here is our blue workshop module and I really don't like how this looks. So what I'm going to do is I am going to basically get all of my storage for material kits and specialized parts and I'm going to clip those into that and try and hide that blue as much as possible because I feel like that color really doesn't go with the rest of the station. The extra planetary launch pads kind of parts, yeah, they, they, they don't look like they match so I have tried to hide that as much as possible but obviously the launch pad itself, I have to keep that visible otherwise that's going to cause some really janky issues when I release craft so we do have that on the top. I think there might be some better ones that I might be able to use later on, but unfortunately where I am in the tech tree at the moment, well, I haven't unlocked those. So what I'm working on now is this kind of like little observation platform, I feel like is what it was going to be, where basically our Kerbals, whilst they are building these ginormous, massive interplanetary ships, well, they can just stand here and look in wonder and awe at this massive spacecraft that they are building and I thought I'd whack some batteries on it, whack some lights, some, some interesting features to make it look a little bit different. I was also considering running a ladder all the way to there but I thought actually that's going to re be, well, that's going to be a lot of parts, it's going to be a huge amount of parts and to be fair it's already 133 parts the space station and we're going to be building massive craft from it so <laughs> that, that's not going to be good. We want to try and utilize the parts to our best ability and I, I probably could have done a much better job with doing that but I wanted it to look kind of cool as well. Anyway, we are now launching the wasps or the moths as a lot of people did say in the comments in the last video they kind of requested moth to be a name although I have changed the design. I have gone in and I have looked at the comments and I have made some adjustments. So. On the tail fins, they are now stabilizers and they are all moving and the wings have been changed as well. I can now only pitch from the stabilizers, the wings control the roll and that's about it. And the way they look now, 
Well, I'm thinking of going for the name Manta for these because they, they do look a little bit, I don't know, Manta Ray-ish and that's kind of what I thought the final design of this looks like. Yeah, and it works a lot better than it did in the last episode. So thank you to everyone who left a comment kind of giving me suggestions in the last video because they did really help. Anyway, I did try to recover the first stage booster then, but for some reason, whenever I went back, when I jumped back to it in FMRS, well, the entire thing decided it was going to break. And I did that four times, I believe. And every single one of those times, well, yeah, it, it broke, the top of the booster broke, and that meant that I wasn't able to control it. So we couldn't recover that, unfortunately. But now we're gonna try and recover the upper stage. Once again, this has had a few alterations to try and make it fly a little bit better. Unfortunately, it is still very, very, very heavy. So we end up crashing into the ground quite hard. I did have quite a bit of fuel left on that stage though. And I think for future launches of this, I'm not sure if I'm going to change the design of it, but if I have fuel left by the time we get to those sorts of altitudes, I'm gonna fire up those two engines again and see if we can gain a little bit more horizontal speed. And then hopefully that should mean I should be able to fly it and land it safely. That is gonna be the only launch of one of these new Manta delivery systems in this episode though. So we won't get that until the next episode. Talking about the next episode, this is Orbital Dockyard Part 1. So I wanted to split these two into two videos because it was going to take a really long time. It would probably take maybe about 30, 40 minutes worth of video to get all of this done to the kind of specification that I wanted this video to be. So this is going to be Part 1 of Part 2. And yeah, Part 2 hopefully should come out next time, sometime next week, I'm, I'm guessing. I've had a bit more time to put this together, but I want to kind of save the video until next week because I am going away next weekend. And obviously it would be nice if I had a video to release whilst I was away. It's a bit of a shame that I've not been able to live stream this weekend as well, because obviously I'm not, I'm definitely not going to be able to do it next weekend. Anyway, we have got the first of the Mantas to, I think, I think I'm going to go with Manta. <laughs> Let me know if you agree with Manta, because I, I think that kind of fits. We got the first of the Mantas to the space station. And one thing that I have kind of not, what didn't really think about until we got this here, is where on earth am I going to dock this? This is becoming very crammed and very crowded. So what I did was I did remove one of the liquid fuel tanks that I did have on the station, and I sent that on its way. But still, this is very, very tight, and we do end up bumping into one of those solar panels. So what we're going to do is we're going to get Taco Bell Kerman out, and he's going to destroy it. And with that, the craft is able to dock. This got me thinking. We currently don't have any way of storing any additional supplies or material kits or specialized parts or extra fuel, to be honest. So these Mantas can deliver that kind of payload. However, they're going to have to keep it on the craft themselves. There's no way of transferring it across to the station, which is a little bit problematic. So one thing that I will do momentarily is build something new for the old RSSI that will kind of fix that problem. But anyway, we have come to extraplanetary launch pads and we have built the ODA core, which is the orbital dock alpha core. Yes, this is going to be the first module that we set up for the new space station. And you may have seen that I had to open up the cheat menu. I did mention this before, but Principia and extraplanetary launch pads do not work well together. No, they break. If you try and release a craft from extraplanetary launch pads with Principia running, well, the game will crash. It will crash to your home screen, which is obviously not ideal. There is a workaround for that though, which is what I did. If you tick on hack gravity, you can disable Principia momentarily and it will allow you to do that. Anyway, we moved the core up to a height of 750 kilometers. It is quite high, but I thought, well, if we're building big interplanetary craft that are going to require long burns, I'd like to have a fair bit of altitude. Anyway, I came back to the old space station and realized that we do not have enough material kits to build anything new for now. So what we're going to do is we are going to get the Manta that delivered the old material kits. Unfortunately, we're going to have to take all of the ones unused with us because, like I said, there is no way of storing these on the space station at the moment. And yeah, we're going to return this home. And I did mention I have actually tested this design before showcasing this mission. This flies a lot 
better than the previous iterations that I designed in the last episode. This thing flies like a dream. We can get through the atmosphere with relative ease and we don't really have anything to worry about. Now the thing that I have to work on is my targeted landings. We are quite close to the space center here. It's just over those mountains that we can see on the right, but still that's not directly at the space center. And I do want to land there at some point. I want to come back from orbit and land nicely on the runway or do something like that because that would be rather cool if we were able to do that and obviously we can't do that yet which is a bit of a shame there is one more landing of a manta because obviously i launched two of them at once in this episode and i get a little bit closer but not bang on and i think now i kind of know roughly where i need to be landing or aiming my trajectory to get it spot on but we'll we'll have to see Anyway, this new vehicle that we are launching, well, it's not a new vehicle. This is a Barbarian 1, which is my 75 tons to low road orbit launch vehicle. And what we're going to be doing is fixing the problem that I was mentioning earlier on with the fact that we cannot store material kits, specialized parts or fuel at the old space station. And also, this should hopefully rectify the problem of it being a little bit too cramped to dock one of those one of those mantas to the station as well but we're going to bring up the multi-vessel tracking and we are going to successfully land the booster this time we touch down bit of a hover and touching down at 0.5 meters per second was enough to bake bake yes we're gonna we're gonna be baking falcon landing legs break those falcon landing legs <laughs> yeah it was enough, so I think I am not going to be using those landing legs at all anymore. There are some better ones that I think I can use, so all future iterations of launch vehicles that are going to attempt a landing will be using different legs. And to be honest, those Falcon landing legs, they're a bit buggy as well. They kind of, they, they, they like the Kraken. They are Kraken bait. The Kraken really does enjoy those landing legs. Anyway, we have got this payload up to orbit now and to the old space station and what we've got on here is a fuel tank which is fully fueled that is one jumbo Rocco Max orange tank full to the brim with liquid fuel and oxidizer then we also have some material kits on here I think about 7200 material kits or it might be even more than that I think it might be 14,400 yes yeah it's that many and we've also got some room for specialized parts but there are no specialized parts on here it is filled with material kits and fuel but the specialized parts because the manta can take quite a few of those up at a time i thought well they're expensive let's not put those on we'll just deliver those with our delivery system at a later point there we go we can see we have now docked that and we are going to be bringing the second manta that we launched earlier on to the station so that we can get those lovely material kits and specialized parts and start working on some new modules that we're going to be building in space to send over to the ODA. I'm calling it the ODA at the moment. I'm not sure if that's going to be its finalized name because it's just it's a little bit boring if you ask me. Orbital Dockyard Alpha? What? Orbital Dockyard 1? That's like untitled spacecrafts of orbital dockyards. Yeah, it's something that I probably <laughs> will change depending on what people think and what it looks like once it is completed because obviously it's going to be a while until it's completed like i said i am splitting this into two parts because it would have taken too long to fit this all into a single video but anyway we have now built the next section which is the recycling module i was struggling with my words there yes no this is i, I was thinking of doing the fuel next but i thought actually let's build all of the habitation section of the spacecraft of the space station first and then we will move on to the, the upper parts. And the upper parts actually take quite a lot of material kits and specialized parts, which is why I'm going to be doing that in the next episode. Yes, <laughs> it takes a while. But in this module, what we've got, we've got just a kind of little docking adapter that has several sections that we can dock to. We've got our recycling module with some radiators on so that hopefully we can cool our reactor when we deliver that at a later date. And then we've got the little grey section at the end, which is kind of a tunnel that is going to lead to an escape pod. So I have designed an escape pod for this that will be able to take six Kerbals back down to the surface of road, hopefully safely. I thought it might just be something nice to have. Obviously, we will be using our space planes. We'll be using the buzzard to get crew up to here. But in case something goes drastically wrong, say 
We leave some Kerbals behind on the buzzard and they are stuck out on the space station. They're running out of supplies and they need to get home. Well, we will have a way of sending them back. And we will be building that escape pod in orbit as well. So if we do use that, we can just build another one in orbit to replace it. In fact, once this space station has been completed, the ODA, we can probably, almost certainly, definitely create one of those from the station. So the worst comes to the worst and the, esca the escape pod even has gone. And they need a new one because, well, we weren't able to fit all of the Kerbals on board. Well, we can just use the new station to build one of those and everything will be good. Everything will be fine. But here we are bringing the next lot of modules over. So the thing at the bottom with the Mark III command pod is going to be the escape pod. And then at the top, it's just another docking adapter. After having seen the issues with docking at the old RSSI, well, I thought I'd have lots and lots of different docking adapters to dock all of the different craft to the space station. And hopefully none of them will ever have weird bumping issues like I did. And we won't have to break any of the solar panels. No, because that's bad. Solar panels generate electricity and we do need electricity in order to produce our spacecraft. But there we go. One docking module all connected. And now what we're going to do is just move the escape pod the escape pod, yes, to the kind of grey metallic tunnel that we've got going on here. And just like that, we are able to dock those successfully, although we do have a little bit of a wobbly issue, but that's nothing the Autostruct can fix once they have been docked together. So what I'm going to do now is come back to the RSSI, and this is where I've realised, well, I've run out of material kits and specialised parts to build anything else. So we're going to have to get rid of this Manta and we're going to have to launch a new couple of these to resupply the RSSI so it can carry on building. However, that will be in the next episode because a whole new launch would take quite some time to go through. But we are going to release this. This time we were able to transfer all of the material kits and specialised parts to the station. So there was nothing wasted. And what we're going to do is once again try and land as close to the Space Centre as we possibly can. So my trajectory, I burnt so that it was slightly in front of the space center. And guess what? That's actually where we end up. So in future iterations of this mission, I think what I'm going to have to do is pretty much land or get our trajectory bang on the space center. And if I do that, then hopefully we should maybe even get a runway landing. That mountain there on the left is the mountain I can see from the space center. The space center is probably like five kilometers away from us. It's, it's really, really close. There we go. We could see it there. Anyway, that will be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. I have been Kanasa and I will see you later.